tough time with India, they'll never get by you tough. They're so this is what I'm looking at. Uh, was our biggest um, I haven't drawn yet, so I'm just I'm just getting my pictures together, and I have taken the last hour or so and watched a video of him doing all his dunks, which was pretty entertaining. Uh, I saw like a bunch of highlights, but this is a, a close-up body that I'm looking at. This is another one with his mouth open, with the signature uh, mouth open, but he does his tongue thing. So I got to make sure to get a picture with that here, and then I got some detail, just random tongue highlights and stuff. But um, I kind of envision him doing something like that, dunking like in the sky, and I even got a little basketball in case I need it later, and I got the little logo. Um, Air Jordan logo, but I'm going to be going with these three reference pictures mainly. And as I sketch, I'm going to be really um, focusing on this interview here. Um, so that just wanted to show you what I'm looking at on my screen. And um, I've got those things here uh, throughout the whole process. Mainly, mainly the sketching. And then when I go to the coloring, I'll probably I'll go with this one. This is probably pretty the, the clearest. It's pretty clear. And then there's, um, I might get another one, but I, maybe even this one. But I basically zoom in on those, and I don't really pay close attention on, to the other ones. I only use all these other angles and video and things like that strictly for the sketching and all the edits that I do. So just thought I'd show you that. So this is me now sketching. Um, I want to mention, if you have any questions, that, like, for example, if you want to know um, what kind of things I use or I don't know if you have any questions just feel free to comment on the uh, on the comment section and on the YouTube video and then I'll go back next week and read the comments and if there are any questions in there um, I'll try to answer them in my next video so if you have any questions regarding uh, I guess custom caricatures and stuff like that um, that I don't share already I guess you can feel free to ask the question and I'll just uh, answer your question on the next video um, I wanted to mention, uh, I don't think I have, but I listen to music as I'm doing this, and sometimes I listen to, like, sermons, um, but, um, the reason is, because it, it kind of helps with the caricature, um, some people don't like noise or music, um, I have a friend named Michael, and he doesn't like to, he likes peace and quiet, so there's no distractions for him, me, on the other hand, and some others, uh, we like music sometimes just to kind of motivate us or uh, listen to something, maybe even a TV program in the background. But do whatever uh, helps you draw caricatures or helps you get in the mood, like in a good mood. Uh, you definitely don't want to be in a bad mood when you're drawing caricatures unless you're drawing some type of Halloween horror theme caricature because that's it'll, it'll really show out in your caricature. Um, like your mood and stuff so just do whatever makes you feel um, good or gets you in a good mood I, I do that and I, I use music and things like that um, I have another note here I was thinking about this earlier today uh, by the way I'm doing just as you can tell I'm doing thumbnail sketches and I think I drew him like four or five times and by the way um, I have like a flash drive I forgot to throw away I bought on eBay it's like a 32 gigabyte um, like flash drive or whatever that's on my camera anyways it was real cheap and it I forgot that it didn't work it works half of the time so the watercoloring you're not gonna see much watercoloring uh, I thought it was recording but it wasn't the flash drive wasn't working or the little disc thing anyway so what I, um, back to what I was saying um, I was thinking today about um, traditional caricatures versus digital. Um, I was thinking about that this morning on um, my way to work, and I was thinking um, something I, I really hadn't thought about, but like um, there there's something special with traditional caricatures. Um, digital characters are great, but there's something um, different in traditional. Um, the one thing that I was thinking about that makes it different is um, when you finish a traditional caricature or e even a piece of art that's traditionally made, anything, any type of art, when it's finished, you have only one master. You have only one original piece. 
So let's say you do a piece of uh, art, a painting, landscape of, of something, a flower, a, a caricature. When you finish it and you give it to a client, um, they have the, the piece. If you think like of a Picasso painting or some, some famous artist, uh, when they finish it, there's only one, you know, there's only one of that um, painting or uh, oil painting or sculptor or sculpture or whatnot, but there's only one. And then when you, when you, in comparison to digital, you have many and you, you know, you have high resolution, you have the lower resolution, the higher re resolution, you get to see all the little pores and all the details, but you have many, you can make many copies of that. Um, I don't know. I was just something to think about. It, it wasn't like I was trying to say that digital caricatures aren't, aren't great at all. In fact, I've invested in, in digital caricatures. I plan to to learn it, to get better at it. And um, I, I really want to learn the technique because you don't need a scanner and it's unlimited amount of paint. You don't need to buy canvases and it, it's really bright, especially with the artists that are really inspiring at the, uh, on the Caricaturama group on Facebook. They do, most, most of them do uh, digital caricatures on there. Um, at least that's what's what wins and stuff. But um, what I was thinking about today is just the the difference between an original um, uh, on, on digital caricatures versus traditional. Just just the simple fact that when you finish it, there's only one, and there's a uniqueness. There's just something special about that one thing. You you can't duplicate it anymore. Uh, whoever owns it, they have it. It's only there's only one of its kind. You can trace it, but it's not the same. Sure, you can make a copy of it. You can, you know, scan it and print it out, but it's there's it's there's nothing like holding an original thing in your hand. Um, there's just something special. Something it's probably something the older folks would say. You know, they would say that the internet's of the devil, and and you know, um, you know, or, or debit cards. It's you know, they would say something like, well, you know, back in my days, we didn't have debit cards. We had you know gold and silver and copper coins and they had dollar bills and um but you know there, there's there's the, i i do understand that aspect in art that you know it, there's something tangible there you can hold um but anyways digital characters are moving up and um i i learned i hope to get better at it and just kind of learn it um it, it's a great tool to what it is but um i don't know i just i don't know what there really, I really didn't have any, a point in that, but I just was thinking about that and just thought I'd mention it. But anyways, um, with Michael Jordan, he was he was uh, kind of hard for me. And, um, the, you know, he has a, a really bald, shiny head. That's about it. And then he has this tongue thing that he does. His ears are kind of unique and special towards the middle and the bottom part. They kind of stick out. The top part of his ear kind of goes in, it sinks in his head. Other than that, you know, his eyebrows aren't really distinct. His nose isn't really distinct apart from it being kind of wide. The lips, there's not, there's not really too much to his lips or his neck or anything like that. The only thing is his bald head and, and you know, he's really dark. So that makes him different too. He's real dark. Um, but what I chose, I, I, I try to fi figure out some things about him. I went on YouTube and he apparently he he sticks out his tongue a lot, especially when he gets in the zone, when he goes for a dunk or a, a big score or a three pointer or something important. He sticks out his tongue, so that was a really good way to. Uh, it was really it was a really good idea to exaggerate that uh, because I don't think a lot of players do that. So you know one of the rules in caricatures is you try to find what what separates that person from the average person. Um, you know, what's unique, what stands out, and then you exaggerate those features. So, um, you know, he didn't have many features, but when he does his tongue, that separates him from almost all the basketball players out there. Um, so I, I tried to incorporate that. I, I think I made it a little bit longer than it needed to be, but anyways, I, that's what I did. So um, I, I, I was, at this point, this might be my fifth. I'm, tr I'm trying to draw him front view, as you can tell. Uh, this one is probably how I would draw him at an event if I didn't have much time. Kind of quarter view, kind of straight, you know, not too much exaggeration, just doing it real quick. 
Um, this this sketch here you see me doing it, it there's not it's kind of mild. Uh, there's nothing it's not like abstract or uh, extreme or really exaggerated. Um, I'm just trying to try to feel the, the features and sometimes I'll do that. I'll just draw him side view, profile, quarter view, straight view, uh, just to kind of get get a feel of, of his features. Um, so that that's what I'm doing in my next sketch. Let me see. Um, oh, I'm drawing some of the eyes, I think. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out how to how to make his cart his eyes kind of cartoony or, or exaggerated. Um, I'm drawing them a few different ways. Um, when I when I get to my last oh by the way that little section that that paused for a minute you, if if you want to go back and pause it or look at it uh, what I was doing is testing the eyes the it just didn't record that part but sometimes when I draw the overall shape of the head I'll draw the nose the mouth the neck the ears and sometimes I'll wait to the very end to add the eyeballs so like for example that one I drew everything and then towards the end I drew the eyes. Um, and what I do is I, I draw the eyes with just dots, just two dots. And I move them up, I move them down, I move them to the right, to the left. I kind of move them around a little bit just to see which, wh where they would fit uh, best to bring a likeness. Um, kind of like a Mr. Potato Head. You just kind of move the feature around the potato. Um, but in this case, you can actually move those holes that those features go into. So. What I was doing is moving the eyes up and down. I don't do that with a lot of features like the nose, the mouth. I don't move them around. Um, I exaggerate them as I'm sketching them. But with the eyes, a lot of times I, I, I move the eyes up and down, side to side. I, I move them around. And with this one, I, I moved it far to the left. And I moved it a little bit high, you know, kind of high from the mouth. There's a lot of space there. He has a long nose. Um, so I, I was moving them. I was testing them um, with that, you know, back uh, a while back in the video. I was testing the eyes with those dots. Uh, with the nostril, um, as you can tell, it, I guess what I, what I felt when I was looking at his face, I just I just felt like a, a round head. There, there, nothing really stood out. His cheekbones weren't like really big, and nothing kind of jaw didn't stick out. There wasn't anything. I just in my mind, I felt I had a feeling of this round, solid um, head. So when I when I when I when I was thinking about that, I figured out well, what are some ways I can do that? How can I make his head, you know, with all the features? How can I make it like a solid piece without, you know, how can I make that more his head more of a solid feature or a solid shape? I don't know if you understand what I'm saying, but the way one way I did it is I took out the nostril, like the outer outer part of his nose, and I just stuck the hole right up against the the face or the cheek. Um, I just I just put a hole there. Um, I don't think you could really sculpt this. Like if I took this drawing and sculpted it, it wouldn't really make sense. But in this drawing, I think it makes a little sense. It might be hard to look at or notice it or understand what it is in fact my wife when she came in she didn't know really how the features work when it was in black and white I showed it to her she said it looked good but she didn't really understand where the nose was or anything she said well maybe when you color it I'll, I'll be able to see it and sometimes that can that can be the case and um, so I don't know if this is a, a good likeness or not but I, I sure had fun with them uh, testing out the, the, like the top lip I you know as you can tell I I uh, stuck it out forward. I had fun with the body, even the shoes. I remember those shoes that I was drawing. I remember them in, I think, middle school. They were out. I think that at that time they were like a hundred bucks. I didn't get any uh, any pairs or any. But um, anyways, I googled those those shoes. I think they're called Air Jordans, and I just drew them. Um, but you're gonna see very little watercolor in the video. Is almost about to finish, so I apologize for not being able to show the all all the other stuff that I painted, but. Um, you'll be able to see the finished work in just a little bit. So we'll see you next time, and I hope that helped.